morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Facebook, family, friends, and everyone else that's seen this video. Amen, amen. This is Pastor Darrell from the Meeting House Church. I'm here uh, to give you our lesson for Sunday. Amen. Um, listen, you know, the, you know the routine. You know, give us the likes and, you know, all the, the thumbs up and everything and all the all across all the social platforms so we know that you're hearing the word, you're getting the word. You're understanding the word and you're replying with the word. Amen. So we're going to pray and we're going to jump right in. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for our time of fellowship one with another, Lord. Even though we might not be in one place, Heavenly Father, we can still touch and agree from wherever we're at, Father. And Lord, we we, uh, we draw right now upon your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, Lord. It would, it would bring us into focus of hearing your word, Lord, and, and, it, and we will uh, draw our attention to it, Father. Lord, that when we hear the word, we will see, Lord, we will hear, Lord, and we will do what the words say. Now, Lord, we place all of our uh, ambitions and everything we have in you today, Father, Lord, to hear your word so that we may become who you called us to be. We thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So, so today I'm flying solo. Pastor Shirley is, uh, is resting, but that is okay. We can do this. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about the language of faith, and the last time we talked, which was on Wednesday, we talked about um, how we learn to hear and how we learn to make uh, hear words and string them together to make them into sentences and uh, you know into into par paragraphs so so forth and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, we talked about how we learn to to enunciate and we learn words from our parents and the people that are around us and um, we mimic what we hear. Um, some of us, you know, as we've grown up and we've gotten out and we get mixed in with certain people, maybe certain people that we shouldn't be mixed in with, we start talking like them and, uh, you know, saying some, some words and some stuff that doesn't seem right to us. And, um, but we take on the vernacular of the people that we hang around. And so, um, God showed us how to talk. And, um, the Bible says in Genesis that he framed this world by what he said. And he wants us to mimic him. So we went on talking about what the man was, was dealt a measure of faith and what I've called your faith bank. And uh, there's a deposit that's in you and God will allow you to draw it on it when needed. And uh, when you, whenever he went in about doing good, as the Bible says, there were people that came to him and he would ask them, where is your faith? In other words, you're not talking like a person that has it in him or in them. And so when they realize what he was asking for, then they would draw upon their faith. And whatever they needed came to pass. And a lot, there was plenty of times we gave you instances of when Jesus didn't even touch people. And he said, thy faith hath made thee whole. And we talked about it in a... And about blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. All right, and how blind Bartimaeus, uh, not only did he rise up when he heard Jesus was coming, but I believe that his faith kicked in and he started to do something that he would never do. And that's to rise up and approach somebody. And he approached Jesus and it says he took off his outer garment, which means it took off the unbelief of what he could have or could be accomplished through his faith immediately. And when he approached Jesus and, he, and Jesus asked him, what do you want? He said, that thou will make me whole. And boom, immediately, or received the sight. Immediately, it says he received the sight. And he, and he went about his way. And he, he, he followed in the way of Jesus and doing what Jesus did and, and, and said what Jesus said. And it changed his speech pattern immediately. And so God is calling us to do, do the same thing. It says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to hear the word of God in our ears. So it gets down into our faith bank, it gets into our heart, it gets into our mind. And so that when we hear it, we begin to speak it. And when we speak it, guess what? According to Romans 4, 17, we can call those things or speak those things that be not as though they were. So now you begin a whole different vernacular of how things are supposed to happen for you in your life. And that's what he's been trying us, trying to get us to, to, to realize that 
though we may live in this earthly realm, but we live in the, in the spirit, in the kingdom, and everything that we need is already in the kingdom. And all we got to do is start activating it by faith. One of my old, pa my old pastors used to tell us early on in ministry, he says, um, faith is like, is like God's currency. And it's true. If you need or want something from God, it takes faith in order for you to get it. You can't get it any other way. So it is God's currency. It's his way of barter. He, if he wants to get something down into you or to you, he wants you to use your faith. Amen? So look, um, Romans 10.35. And Romans 10.35, you, you don't have to turn to it. I'm, that's not my scripture I want, but I'm going to quote some, some from it. It says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Your confidence, that's your trust, your belief. All right? Don't, don't throw it away. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath a great recompense of reward. Listen, it's easy to give up when it's just not going right. When things just aren't going the way you thought it would be and... Um, you know, some things aren't measuring up and it's not happening for you as quickly as, as you thought it would. But he says, don't cast away your confidence. Don't cast away your faith. Don't cast away your belief, your trust in me. He said, why? Because at the end of it, there's a great reward that you get for not casting it away. It's easy to give it up. But once you got it and you hold on to it, the tenacity that you got inside of you, there's something great that you get when you stand the test of time. And you put your faith, your fidelity, your trust, your confidence in God. Amen. You also go down to uh, uh, Hebrews 10, 38. It says, and the just shall live by faith. So if we're the just, if we're the righteousness of God, if we've been made in his image, if we sit, sit on the right hand of the father with Jesus, and we sit, we're seated in heavenly places, I'm the just. And so since I'm the just, I have to live differently than the way this world says live. Hmm. Because the world says, listen, you can only get by if you go do this and you do that. And, you, you know, you, you, you work your nine to five or eight to four and, and you know, you invest here and you invest there. And, and that's all good because God even tells you to work. He even tells you to invest. But he says you still have to live by faith. You live by faith. He says, so the stuff that you think that you can't control, you're like, oh, God, how am I going to make it? No, where, where am I going to get, how am I going to make these ends meet? God says, listen, the just shall live by faith. So if you are worrying and being concerned about how you're going to make ends meet, maybe you're not the just. That's rhetorical. I'm not, I'm not, hey, I'm not, I didn't make you, all right? So listen, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. So I'm going to talk about two men today in the Bible um, that get a had, who had a different perspective on God, and they lived by faith, Okay? Hebrews 11, verses 5 and 6. It says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. It says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's a whole lot of meat in that right there, y'all. So listen, he says, based upon what has been said about Enoch, and if you go back to Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, it says the same thing about Enoch. He was translated, all right? And God was so pleased with the faith or the confidence of Enoch that he, just, he didn't even see death. He didn't taste death. He, there was nobody to mourn for him. There was no crying. He didn't have no disease. There, there was no sickness that came upon his, upon his body. God was so pleased with the relationship that he had with Enoch. Now get this. Enoch lived for 365 years. 365. You, you, you get that? Does not correlate with how many days there are in a year? So he lived for 365 years and his relationship was so phenomenal with God that it pleased him so much that he just believed God for everything. His confidence, his trust was so in God that God has such a good time in their fellowship with him. God just said, listen, I can't break my fellowship with you. 
I got to take you with me because you're just so good for me. You, you ever have somebody that was just good for your ego? You know, someone always pumped you up and said, come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. No matter if you came in last place, they was always cheering for you and they were, they, they were, they were your rallying cry and, and they were always on your side. That's what Enoch was for God. Enoch was the one that says that his confidence, his faith pleased God so much that God says, I can't, I can't let your, I can't let our fellowship break. I can't let you go back into the world. I can't let you go doing your, your everyday thing. I want you with me all the time. And he says, and he loved him so much that he didn't even allow him to taste or see death. He, Enoch was, and then Enoch was gone. Just as simple as that. Now that's, that's, that's deep when you, when, you, when you think about it. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, that's the epitome of that scripture. And so Enoch had so much um, confidence in what God could do and who he was. Now, obviously, Enoch had some sort of uh, representation or history with God that he knew who God was. And, you know, he was the seventh generation from Adam. And so whatever was passed down all the way, it got to Enoch. And Enoch did something that no one else did. Enoch found out what it took to put a smile on God's face, to make God chuckle, to, to, to get a laughter out of him. And God loved him so much. He just put his arm around him and said, come on, go with me. And that's, that's deep. I mean, if we ever could get to that, good Lord, Jesus. Mm. But, but listen to this. Enoch was, was, was such a great person that he goes on and prophesies in Jude. Chapters 1, verses 14 and 15. I'm going to read it to you. Or am I? No, I'm not. Well, that's where it's at. Jude, chapter 1, 14 and 15. And Jude was all the way in Genesis. But here he is giving a prophecy almost at the end of the book. Amen? So his reliance on God was so unique that God didn't want to break the fellowship with him. God loved him that much. He pleased him. He and it says, this was what God said about him. God loved his testimony. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. This is his testimony was that he pleased God. If we can get that down, oh, we would just like to have that testimony with our spouses or our friends. Oh my God, they're such a great person. Oh my God, she is so awesome. But it says his testimony was that he pleased God. Amen. So this is the measurement that God uses now. He says, listen, if you want to please me, you got to come after me. You got to come after me with faith. Because without faith, you can't please him. All right? So you can't, listen, you can't get an interview, an opportunity, an audience, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, you know, a, a time to get before him without faith. So, listen, use the little measure of faith that you got to get to God. All right? So when you use your faith and you get an audience with him, he, he gets to open up and tell you who he is in your life. And, he'll, and you will blossom because you are starting to uh, see the revelation that he had on your life. And you will realize there are some things that you have fallen short of. And he says, but listen, it's okay because you're in my presence. Amen. So it's going to take the tenacity of faith to get to a, a, a place, an audience to please him. Just to please him. Just to be around him. That's... That's tremendous. And, you know, like I always tell everybody, we got some work to do. We all do. We all do. Now drop down to Hebrews 11, 8. Let's talk about somebody else here. Let's talk about Abraham. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should go, which, which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Oh, wow. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Hmm. Hmm. Listen. Obviously, the relationship with Abraham and God was something 
that was more than it was just contextual. It was more than something that was just surface level. It was deeper than that. He says, and God spoke to him and said, Abraham, excuse me, Abram. He said, get up and go. He didn't question. He didn't say, but my family. He didn't say, I'm leaving all this stuff. Why are you calling me? Why can't you call somebody else? No, it says that he obeyed without question. How, now, how many of us, our boss tells us to go do something? You're like, what? Why did you call? You know, or if, if your spouse, your husband, or your wife asks you to go do something, you're like, right away, honey. No, I don't think so. Okay? Sometimes, you know, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you're like, man, I'm so tired. And I'm sure Abraham could have said, man, I'm so tired. You know, what do you, what do you mean you're calling me to go to some place I don't even know? Well, see, what Abraham was doing was he was just following after what his uh, father-in-law already showed him. Go to Genesis uh, chapter 11. Abram's father, rather, excuse me. Since Abram's father was moving his family already when he died. He died in a place that was not familiar to Abraham, but it was a familiar region. Now, when, when, when God calls you to do something, the only way you can do it is by faith. You can't do it by like, well, I hope this works. By hook or by crook. Mm -mm. So, so Abram's father was already moving the family in Genesis chapter 11. All right. It says, and he died in the place called Haran. And so Abram is already out of where he was, the Ur of Chaldees. And he moves into a place called Haran and his father dies there. All right, so so the so the, the the relationship is already established with God because He's listening. Okay, in Genesis twelve one, it says, "Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land which I show thee." He says, "I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing." Hmm. So now He's telling, "All right, so listen. I know where you're at, Abraham." And you're in a land that's familiar to you. He said, but I want to take, I want to take you a step further. Hmm. I want to take you to a place that you don't know of. I want to take you a place that there's a great inheritance for you. And you don't know anything about it. He said, but there's some things I need for you to do. I need for you to leave your family. <laughs> and I need for you to leave your kindred, all your relatives. Hmm. Hmm. Now, how many of us would do that? See, so Abraham gets tested with this throughout his whole life, in case you guys don't know this. And he, and so he goes and he, and God, God promises to him. Remember, it says, remember what we said in, in Hebrews 10, 35, cast not away thy confidence. Why? Because there's a great reward for the recompense of it. All right. So, he says in verse 2 of Genesis 12, 2, he says, I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So he says, listen, Abram, I'm going to do some stuff for you that has never been done for anybody else in this world. He says, if you have faith in me, which I know you do, I'm going to prove myself to you. He says, and I am going to make your name great, and I will make you, uh, you a blessing to everyone. That's a pretty big order to, 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 to go under. But Abram, what else does he have? All right. Verse three, he said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. It says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and he took Lot with him. Hmm. He took Lot with him, his kindred. Now, so he, 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 he left his father's house. He left the region he was used to, but he took one of his kindred with him. Now, here's the great thing about God. God is faithful even when, when we aren't faithful. He's obedient to his, to his word, to his vow, even when we aren't obedient to our word and our vow. And it says that he blessed Lot. Abraham and the only way
way they had to separate is because they were they were they were wealthy. They were wealthy. Lot is his nephew. And the herdsmen and the cattle, they were bickering one with another. And Abraham says, Listen, whatever way you pick, I'm gonna pick the other way. If you go left, I'm gonna go right. If you go right, I'm gonna go left. And it says Lot looked over and saw Sodom and Gomorrah and saw that the water was flowing and looked fervent. And he said, I'm going to go that way. And Abram, Abram said, I'm going to go that way. And God spoke to him. And he says, look to the north, south, east, and west. He says, I'm going to take you there. I'm going to bless that land where you're going. And you know the story of, of, of Lot. Okay? But we're talking about Abraham. And when Abraham had the faith and the promise that God has, has, has put inside him, God had to... Had to had to spark something inside of him to say, hey, listen, there's more for you than what you see. Hmm. Some of y'all ought to be getting that. That that should be something that should be rising up inside. There's more to you than what you see. And what, what, is, what has happened is that we settle for what is around us because we think that's all there is to. But God wants so much more for you. He says, but you got to have faith in me. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't just throw it away because things haven't, haven't gone your way. He said, listen, just wait a little while. It's, I'm going I'm to bring it to pass, but I need for you to learn about the faith that's inside of you. And so, so when you start to learn about the faith inside of you, faith does not work on your timetable. It works on the way God wants it to work, when God wants to bring things to pass. He, he, it's, it's his time and chance must intersect. For things that happen in your life, and God will bring it to pass when it's the right time. Because if you get something when it's in the wrong season, you may be the right person, but in the wrong season, and you will mess it up. Or you can be in the wrong season and be the right person and mess it up. So God has got to orchestrate things for your pathway to cross and everything to intersect so that when, when you step into your time and into your season, your faith kicks in and you get favor from everything that God has brought for your life. Let me tell you, there, there's a different way that we need to believe. There's a different way that we need to hear. And there's a different way we need to speak. Now, listen, I, I know, you know, with all the turmoil and things that are going on in the world right now, they are, they are looking for us to be panicky and, oh, my God, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do that. Listen, I, I believe in faith. I believe in faith. I believe that God says in his word that no plague no sickness, nothing shall come nigh me. Psalms 91. And if it by chance do, I can lean back on Isaiah 53 and 5 and 2 Peter 2, 24. By those stripes, I am healed. But I believe that I'm covered by the blood. My whole household, my family, my cars, the people I come in contact with, everything I got is covered because I believe I have confidence in God that he's going to do exactly what he said he would do. He said he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I got to keep running after him with faith. Because that's what I know when I, when I reach that point with my faith, I know that I will get what I need. I don't have to ask anybody for it. All I got to do is ask him for it. So listen, I need for everyone. I hopefully this word is, is, is getting across to you. It's changing your, your, your perception, your mindset about the word, and that God will do what he said he would do if you just put your faith, your trust, your fidelity, your confidence in him and his word. Because you have to start using the language of faith and not just saying it. It says the just shall live by faith. So let's live by it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Amen. So listen, let's 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 pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you for all those that have heard it, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would reignite, Heavenly Father. You would charge, Lord, and you would introduce them to their faith. Now, Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that that need to hear the word and have heard the word, Lord, that it will go down into, into their heart, Lord. It will take root, Lord. It will bring about uh, good fruit, as you said you were, and their fruit shall remain, Father. 
Lord, teach them about faith, Lord, like never before, Lord. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would you you would do what you said you you said in, in Malachi. Prove me. Prove me. That means dare me. Let me show you who I am. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the measure of faith, Lord, that we have in us, Heavenly Father. Lord, that you you said that is what that is what we must use to please you. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that are hearing this word, Heavenly Father, Lord, that they're going to be challenged, Lord, with their faith, Lord, and their faith shall arise and it shall bring forth their fruit. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, Meeting House family and friends and everybody, I thank you once again for tuning in to this broadcast. We love you guys. We miss you guys. We're praying for you guys. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pick up your phone. Call them. See how they're doing. Drop something off to them. Tell them you love them. Tell them you miss them. Amen. Amen. Listen, we love you guys. We miss you guys. Um, we, hopefully, we, we're going to be putting our hands on you soon, 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 soon. But listen, until then, we'll keep coming through this way, Heavenly Father, giving you the word so the word can change, challenge you, and, and keep you growing. Amen? Amen, amen. So listen, hit all the social buttons, uh, the likes, subscribe, your, your giving buttons. We, you know, we thank God for you guys. You guys are, are truly partners. And you are covenant with us, Heavenly Fathers. And, and Lord, we just thank you once again for all the people, Lord, that hear this broadcast, Lord, that you said in your word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So this is Pastor Darrell for the Mean House Church, and Pastor Shirley, and all the partners. We love you, and we'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.